Pippo, give me a break. Now, take your time on this one, Polly. There's a lot riding on that projectile. Willa, Bruski, it's for me and old Dead Eye here. Winner pays, right, Polly? What can you do, Brody? God has always been on the Kennanite side. Can't even get drunk without coots around. Damn coots crawling all over the place. Maybe I can break double figures. Yes! Pretty shot. Sure. Double. Hey, wait a minute. I think I detect a certain family resemblance here. John D., you didn't go sneaking up behind that commune in 1960. How old you say you was, coot? <laughs> How much can I have to pay you, John D? Huh? How was kids old lady anyway? Now, everybody knows that these coots have to hire outside studs. Sorry, the brats. Otherwise, old Pauly here's nose would be on the side of his face, and he'd have three arms and maybe no. How about it, Willa? Coots okay in that department? Shut up, Sam! I hear they even do it with their hats on. Grab him. Hey. Stop it, Sam! Now, he could have killed me, the son of a... Only if he wanted to. Let him go, John D. Go home and sober up, Sam. You ain't heard the last of this one, Coop. Get it!
okay, Sam? What can I do for you, mister? Fill her up, check the oil. Hey, Jerry. You going to the meeting? I'm uh, waiting for the wife to relieve me. We're gonna need all the boats we can get. to the uh, Kennanite community. Coot, say. Uh, did you come for the lynching? Lynching? Well, I know about the murders. But you can't seriously believe that the Kennanites are responsible for this. Sure we do. Those coots, they're always causing trouble. And they're probably the most law-abiding citizens in the history of this country. Hundred years in America without virtually a, a crime, never mind a murder. Lots can happen in a hundred years, mister. My friend Gideon, thank you for coming. It's been too many years. Only ten. A sixth of a man's lifetime. <laughs> well, as soon as you called, I headed right for the airport. It's really good to be back here. I just wish 
could be under more pleasant circumstances. Come inside. I'll tell you everything we know. You know, the fact that this community trusts me, an outsider, is a great honor. But where's Paul? He always used to be standing by your side whenever there was community business. Paul's changed. I never know where he is. At times, it seems like he's not a part of us anymore. Come inside, please. In the last few years, Jacob has become a trusted advisor. As you learned during your last visit here, Professor, our neighbors don't always speak the truth about us. Well, lying about you is one thing, but if a witness actually saw a Canaanite running from the murder scene... Yes, our word against the hired hands. A farmer like yourself, no doubt a Christian. Not like us. Elman, I trust that the Canaanites have not dispensed with charity since the last time I was here. You know us, Gideon. Violence is the world's way, never ours. That is why we live apart. That is why every Canaanite community is rebuilding Noah's Ark. Well, unfortunately, if there's a posse on the way, they won't be coming two by two. Why don't you talk to the sheriff and tell him that you're willing to participate actively in helping to solve the crime? That way, trouble might not... What? To prevent trouble? They bring trouble. Outsiders always bring trouble. The damage has already been done. The local farmers have always resented us. And after this, we have to prepare to move on. No matter what happens, no matter who killed Kimball, that is the Canaanite way. When the corruption of the fallen world reaches out to us, we go into the desert and we begin again with a new community. Yes, but this is your community now. We are not of the town. Yes, but you deal with the town. Gideon's right. Rebecca? Rebecca, is that you, Becca? <laughs> Behold, Rebecca, daughter of Bathuel, an exceedingly comely maid. <laughs> little Rebecca. Not so little anymore. Yes, but still exceedingly comely. <laughs> Gideon. I'm afraid you're going to have to trust due process, Helmut. We trust God's law, not man's. Yes, but didn't he also say, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's? Cooperate, Helmut. Cooperate with the sheriff, please. Excuse us, Papa. Jacob, come. Sorry I couldn't make it to your commencement. Hours happen on the same day. Did you get my telegram? Addressed to Rebecca Hess, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> it was your gentle persuasion that made that moment possible. Uh, no, when I first set foot here, I just remembered how much I missed this place. Show me around. Show you that sending me to college was worth it. Whoa! <laughs> Not exactly mopping the floors around here, are you? Women's work of the 90s. You have no idea how I had to fight for this. Same software the big corporate farms use. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've had to reprogram it to maximize efficiency for a farm of this size. Now I save us money by buying on the spot market, playing the commodities. Uh-huh. Now, you be careful who you imitate, Becca. The world is staggering beneath its burdens. None of them created by the Canaanites. Mm. You ever think about uh, not coming back here? When I was away in college? <laughs> All the time. But you came back? Yes, of course. Mm. To my family, my friends, our life. It's what I missed most when I was out there, the hourness of life, uh, the community, the sharing. Yeah. What's mine is thine. Yes. <laughs> I finally understood that age-old Kennanite saying. Among my college friends, it was always, what's in it for me? Mm, me, me, me. That's just the American dream. Mm, not mine. I was different. I am different. I'm a Kennanite. 
We're special. I believe that. Of course, it doesn't mean we have to live in the dark ages. Mm. And have a responsibility to show the error of our ways. All right. <laughs> Here, the ones on the other side. <laughs> Girl of your virtue and beauty, and you're still unmarried. Why, Rebecca? I'm only 26. Ah. Besides, no one in the community would have me. I expect, Becca, that you are having fun putting the fear of God into all those young men. The fear of woman. Gideon! Gideon! Helmet wants Paul. Where is he? The sheriff's outside. Well, as I said, uh, Reverend Hex, I think we can clear all this up real quick if I can just have a few minutes with your son. Sure. Sheriff, you have a warrant? And who the hell are you? Professor Oliver, a friend of ours from New York. I didn't think he was a local boy. He stayed with us back in the 70s. Uh-huh. Are you a lawyer, mister? No, Sheriff, I'm an anthropologist. You're doing research on the Canaanites. Research? Mm -hmm. Now, where is that son of yours? Are you a lawyer? No, of course not. Don't you think you better talk to one before you come on private property accusing somebody of murder? I'm not accusing anybody of anything. We don't have anything to hide, Sheriff. My son will cooperate with you. Well, thank you. Now we're getting someplace. You left the tavern, then what? Came home. Back here, to my room. Anyone see you come back? No. Then I didn't want anyone to see me. It was late. It's not, uh, very comfy, is it? Nah, my, uh, my wife, she'd, uh, Fill the place up with a bunch of knickknacks and uh, damn frilly pillows. Wallpaper with flowers on it. Whew. <laughs> well, you all have a good day. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, Bubba. We got two murders. We got coots. We got a posse brewing back in town. And we got a New York anthropologist for crying out loud. Last week, Jimbo, this was a real easy job. I hear that. Well, sir, we'll just see what the wonders of modern police science has to say about this. Ain't that something? What a world we live in. Well, I'm waiting in the fair way of your love. If I don't get a call from you, I'm going to be in the rough. Now, I never Jimbo! Know. Jimbo, put a lid on that rhapsodizing, boy. All right, you don't like country music, I won't sing. I don't have to sing. I can sit here and think about it. Kimbo was a drunken pig. The man is dead. That's between him and his God. It's time to decide, Paul. You're 22 years old. It's time to be baptized. I'm not ready. That ego of yours is a dangerous master. You'll need the people more than ever to get through this. What is mine is thine. Ruderhoff will have to know that you're one of them. I wanted to smash his face. What he said about Mama. I wanted to. God forgive me, I wanted to. But I couldn't. Murder? A woman? I didn't do it, Papa. You believe me, don't you? 
I believe you. But in the outside world, that is often not enough. Papa, is there anything I can do? Can't you see I'm talking to your brother? Stop yelling at Rebecca. It's me you're angry with. Rebecca is my daughter. And you are my son. And I'll speak to both of you as you need to be spoken to. Need? What I need is my freedom. Gideon, um, can I ask you a question? Sure. What do you think about girls? They're good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Warn the men. Ring the bell. Come on. Posse's coming. You have a gun? Oh, a shotgun. Only for coyotes when they bother the sheep. I don't have to do, because there's about four truckloads of coyotes coming up the road. Come on, let's go. kid who killed Sam Kimball. Sheriff Talbot has already been here. Yeah, well, we're here to help him. You know, make sure he didn't forget nothing. These people already told Sheriff Talbot that they would cooperate. I'm talking to the preacher. Let's go, boys. Take it easy. Time out, Frank. Where's the kid who killed my friend Sam Kimball? <laughs> well, now, what is this? I thought you was all pacifists. Not all of us. My truck. You shot my truck! Now that I got your attention, this meeting is adjourned. I'll be back, boy. Tell me about the land adjacent to the Kimball spread. 1979, the Canaanites owned 38 farms in the state. They continue to branch out, as they call it, with their colonies. In 1983, and notice what's going on in this town's area. Well, the corporate farms have increased. Agrilux. The company bought up, oh, 20,000 acres. Turned out to be only the thin end of the wedge because this is what's happened in the past few years. Looks like Agrilux is on the move. Who's the head honcho down here and where do I find him? Name's Lee Drexel. He's at the county headquarters. I couldn't believe it when my secretary said a Professor Oliver wanted to see me. <laughs> Listen, I would be honored if you'd sign this. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. Well, here. No, I've got one. Oh, all right. You know, I sometimes wonder who actually reads this stuff, including my colleagues. I did some university lecturing myself at one time. Really? Where? Over at A&M. Ah, first-rate school. Thanks. Oh, sit down. Thanks. I read it, Professor, several times. In fact, I read everything I could get my hands on when we started working out here in Kennanite country. Brilliant farmers, the Kennanites. I've come to admire them immensely. Well, that would make you a distinct minority in this town. I heard about last night, your little seminar with the posse. Tough audience. Very tough. You better believe it. If I were the Kennanites, I'd get me some guns and then a smart lawyer. This murder thing's absurd. But it's going to take more than a college professor to prove it. Cheap help, Mr. Drexel. I know I'm not an attorney, but I think I know the Kennanites better than most. Just think of me as their spokesperson. All right, speak to me. How can I help you? Them. The Kimball spread. 
You are doing research, aren't you, Professor? Well, according to the county survey, it's the biggest spread of private property that's not owned by the Canaanites or Agrilox. Right again, and as I told the sheriff this morning, I made Sam an offer the day he died. He said he'd sleep on it. Not a good night for Sam. Well, who benefits from Kimball's death? Not me. That land's going to be in probate forever. Look, don't quote me on this, but Sam Kimball was not the friendliest guy in the world. The fact that he has or had an enemy or two does not surprise me. You listen to the posse. It's where he was Mother Teresa. Yeah, but who listens to the posse? Lady, call McNamara. Tell him I'm on my way. Yes, sir. Professor, it has been a delight. I'd like to uh, pick your brains about the Canaanites one night. Maybe I could buy you a drink or what passes for dinner in a place like this. Oh, I like that very much, Mr. Drexel. Bye. Hey, where are you going? The elders are meeting in there. Yes, about my brother. Excuse me, please. What do we do if they come back? What do we do if the sheriff arrests Paul? How many juries does my brother have to face? This is not your place, girl. Who else will stand up for Paul? His own father is present. Yes, but his father, my father, has divided loyalties, his family and his community. And we know what must come first in the mind of a Canaanite leader. Paul has already expressed repentance for his brawling. And the sheriff. What if there's a trial? There is no precedent for such a thing in this community. You're too lenient, Helmut. Gentlemen, if I may. You may nothing, Herr Professor. That business with the shotgun was plenty enough. Absolutely unnecessary. Rebecca is at least one of us. Oh, he has done his best to change that, too. I agreed with Gideon's suggestion that Rebecca be allowed to attend the university. But we all agreed that the farm could benefit from the technical knowledge she would bring back. Her superior attitude, a woman that has not helped the community. The farm bosses resent her meddling, her computers. And meddle I will when it comes to my own brother. Bingo, Jimmy. Country dirt, but not pure dirt. Little blood mixed in. Mrs. Kimball's blood, according to the lab. We're gonna have to make another little visit to Coot Country. You better bring the extra rifle, just in case. Get over here. We're gonna have to take you in now, son. And you just stay out of it, Professor. I got evidence, I got the papers. Helmet's seen him. Sheriff, are you sure you can protect this boy from that posse? They're not the enemy. Maybe not your enemy. They're my neighbors, my friends. Well, since you know them so well, what do they know about the right to due process? Oh, there you go again with that legal mumbo jumbo, which reminds me, you better find a good lawyer for this boy. Come on, get him out of here. Kimballs. He couldn't have. He was with me. All night. Don't you see? 
If that woman is telling the truth, then Paul has an alibi. He may not even have to go to trial. It says here that the woman who is like a harlot shall be trod upon like dung. Dung cannot save the day, not even in their courtroom. Spare me the Bible lesson, please. The simple fact of the matter is that Paul, your son's life is at stake. My son, the brawler, the prisoner, the companion of that woman, is not my son. My son is dead. I got scientific evidence that tells me that the heck kid did it. You, with all due respect, got the word of a local whore that he didn't do it. An ex Canaanite whore at that. Ex Canaanite? Oh. <laughs> I gather that that little nugget of information slipped through the professor's extensive investigation of this case. Oh, touche, Sheriff. I didn't know she was part of them. Yeah, you bet. A lost sheep from the colony over in Bush now. Why, even old Helmet is not going to believe Willa. I don't know what's worse in his eyes. His son a murderer or sleeping with a whore? That boy could never beat somebody to death with a hammer. I believe that. Hey, and I believe in every drop of rain that falls, but as a police professional, I need facts, hard evidence, rain on my face. Where's the kid's lawyer? The gentlemen of the local county bar aren't exactly lining up for the job. Well, I believe this is yours. Get that on, Coop. Well, a coot criminal. Ain't that interesting. What are you in for, Coop? Dancing? Sneaking a smoke out behind the barn? Hey, maybe kissing one of them little coot girls with pretty bonnets and rosy cheeks, huh? Not very friendly, is he? I thought they taught you some manners out there in Coot Town. I think you need to some manners. <laughs> Lesson number one. You speak when you're spoken to. Lesson number two. <laughs> <laughs> I left the Bushnell farm three years ago. It happens. Adventure, bright lights. Love. You see, a lot of us girls had these fantasies about what the men were like on the outside. Girly dreams, you know. Then one day, this tractor salesman from Billings shows up. He tells me I'm the most beautiful girl he's ever seen. No one's ever told me I was pretty before. So, you decided to leave. I wouldn't exactly call it a decision. The next night, Charlie, that was the guy's name. Charlie drove his car out by one of the corn sheds, and I hopped in. What did your Sir Galahad do then? Left me sitting in a diner. Said he had to make a phone call. I got a ride as far as here. Because of the commune? There was a sign in the tavern, waitress wanted. But maybe knowing that there were Canaanites nearby had something to do with it. I don't know. Your own people, they'll always take you back. You know that, don't you? If I confess and repent, yes. But the one thing I've learned living on the outside is that I'm no saint. I could never make it as a Canaanite. What I'm supposed to make it as, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Can I see him now? I don't know, Willa. I mean, your boyfriend up there just got himself into a hell of a punch out. I mean, you better not. Is he okay? Yeah, he's all right. He's a tough kid, but I, I'm... Come on, Jimmy, just for a minute, okay? All right, one minute. Being shut in doesn't feel so great, does it? Me 
Yeah, I'm used to it. Now, listen, I'm, I'm going to stand the elders and make sure they get you a decent lawyer. <laughs> to them, I'm tried and convicted. Dead and buried. Don't turn your back on the Bruderhof. Believe me, I know. I tried, and it didn't turn out so great. I have no one but you, Willa. It's about time, Willa. I'll come back whenever they let me, OK? You just think about it. Kimball's killer will be next. Another despicable act of vandalism. We have to plan ahead. Don't we have enough trouble without thinking about moving the whole community? It's been done before. As our Lord told his apostles, and whosoever shall not receive you or hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. And we have lived by those words for centuries. That's how our ancestors got here. First from Europe, and then Russia, and now America. The brethren will have to decide. Those who want to leave. Those who want to stay. Lord God, Father of all Canaanites, your elected servants, you who have endowed us with ideas and machines to help us toward your greater glory, show me the way as you have shown it before. Thy will be done. Amen. Woman's work is never done, huh? Uh, just going over some numbers. Uh, the accountant, he's worried about the IRS. Aren't we all? <laughs> the vote? Helmet won. For now. <laughs> For you, to help you fit in. Oh. Think I'll pass? <laughs> you certainly fit my version of what a Kennanite man ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Rebecca. Rebecca, why are you so hard on Jacob? He cares about you. Oh, yes, he needs me to help him become a great Canaanite leader, leader of the next colony. Is it so bad, daughter? Marriage, a helpmate. No, but on my own terms. Your terms? Sometimes I wonder if I made the right decision. Allowing me to attend the university was the most important thing a father could do for his child. The elders may be right. You have developed an arrogance. Strength is different from arrogance, father. And pride. The worst sin is different from strength. Are you happy? I am. You've saved me from the tedium of cooking, cleaning, mending. Your mother was happy as a Kenanite wife. Did you see marriages better than ours in the outside life? Do you think mother was content with her life? Of course she was. Did you ever even ask her? Did you? Hey, 
which one would you buy, this one or that one? Well, drills are not really my specialty. That makes two of us. Used to be you go to the hardware store and buy yourself a drill. Now it's 2,000 RPMs or three, reverse or not. Cordless? Not as powerful, but more convenient. Mr. Atwood, my name's Gideon Oliver. I know. Small town. Good. Heard you're a real good lawyer. Good, yeah. Stupid, no. Well, people in the legal profession around here are either very smart or very cowardly. That's a matter of opinion, Professor. But lawyers are basically practical men. And Sid over there sell a lot of ammo today. Funny thing, it's not even hunting season. Now, if you'll excuse me, Professor, I think I'll take your advice and spring for that cordless model. Oh, you look terrific in that dress. <laughs> no luck with Mr. Atwood. He's afraid, just like the rest of them. Say, Professor Oliver. Mr. Drexel, what brings you to the big city? Yeah, I've been trying to get out of towns like this all my life. Morning, Miss Heck. I didn't know you knew each other. Well, I may be a busy man, but I'm not a blind man. Mr. Drexel was kind enough to have an Agrilux programmer help us set up the computer system. Thus proving that even a representative of the evil empire of international agribusiness can help a fellow farmer. How's your brother holding up? As well as can be expected, thank you. Well, I hope things improve for him. Listen, don't forget, I still owe you dinner. Nice to see you again, Ms. Heck. Compliments to the chef, Coot. Hey, kid. Last call. Dinner is served. You know, Coot, you better be nice to me. Because I'm an important man in your life. Yeah, that's right. I've had some offers. Some night I'm not looking. And suddenly, abracadabra. You disappear from here. And you turn up dead. Hate to see good food go to waste. Bon appetit. Hey, there's something wrong with the cook. Guards, guards. Hey, there's something wrong with the cook. Kill me before that. What kind of shape's your car in? out of jail last night. 
who appointed you. Shut up! Professor, you know, after what you did to my truck, I got a good mind to cut you in half. <laughs> Kid's here. He's invisible. We'll find him. Don't you worry. But as for you, you have a real nice day. <laughs> Your time is over. Oliver, I got an escape criminal on my hands. Well, it looks like you could use some help. This is no cowboy movie, my friend. Well, what if they catch him? When they catch him, because I know my boys. They'll kill him. Oh, that makes it simple. There's no sweat. That makes your job a whole lot easier, doesn't it? I don't even know why I'm talking to you, mister. Let me put it this way. The coots have their customs. We have ours. Yeah, that's some custom lynching party. Hey, Mr. New York, it's one way to keep the criminals off the street. Hey, you know, you're not talking like a lawman here. You're talking like a real redneck racist. I talked the county into one plane. It's circling the hills right now. It's a horse race, Oliver. I'm trying. I'm really trying. We're going to get stopped for speeding. You're not hurt? No. Come on, we got to keep moving. Not in this one, not. Come on, let's go. Out the window. Carol. All right. Come on. Breaker, one nine bull shot. Do you read me? This is Rockefeller. We're moving out to the old Bond off road. Yeah, yeah, Rockefeller, we read you fine, loud and clear. Uh, our 20 is about uh, two miles south of Gretchen. Yeah, we're heading for uh, higher ground, loaded for fair. Lucky for us, Jimbo, that there's no IQ test to get into the posse. <laughs> Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller. Let's see what our air cover's seeing out there. County. Uh, Roger, this is County. Back to Sheriff Talbot. I haven't got him yet. to the mill. We don't have a chance against the plane if we're in the open. 
Come on. Come on, honey. Come on. He has sinned against God. He has sinned against the brotherhood. Therefore, let God's will be done. Do you really believe that, Jacob? Do you really believe that that posse, that that bunch of lunatics up there on the hill with guns are doing God's will? Why are you so eager to abandon this community after years of hard work? You're standing there like some black messiah, Oliver. But to you, it's just a, a social experiment. Moving on is an important part of our history. Our leader, Jacob Kennan, was burned at the stake for his religious beliefs. 2,000 Kennanites have been murdered, impaled, roasted in ovens. Our martyrs for being different. No, no, Jacob, for being Christian. Now, you people are so busy being successful farmers. Are you beginning to forget your own theology? You're asking us to go to war, Gideon. Come it. Do you remember the first time I visited you, I asked you what you thought the advantages of communal living was? You remember what you said to me? Do you remember? Helmut said to me, the stronger the pressures are against us, the stronger we become. Then he said, in your life, and he was speaking to me, he said, in your life, you have to stand up alone. In our life, there are many of us to help a fallen brother. Now, Paul has fallen, just like Adam fell, just like some of us fall sometimes. But Paul is not a murderer. Now, in order to prove that, he's got to come and stand trial. Now, you know these hills where you camp, where you played as children. Now, please, help me find Paul before the posse finds him, and we have to bury another Kennanite martyr. All right, let's go. Come in, Rockefeller. We got something. We found their car. We found Willis' car. You copy? That's a big four. How about your 20? With the low water crossing uh, County Road 69, about 10 miles southeast of town. You copy? Read you loud and clear, Bullshot. We're on our way. Still all right. Still all right. <laughs> Gotta make it down the cliff and wrap the mill. Come in, Sheriff Talbot. This is County. Uh, do you read me over? What you got, County? I think we got him. Going in for better luck. Let's go. We 
Just make it inside. I think it's broken. I think I'm going to pass out. We'll be safe in here for a little while. On word, Christian soldier. Damn, I'm playing this game a day late and a dollar short. Good afternoon, Sheriff. I understand this is an old Kennanite playground here. Well, you found it, and I found it. Unfortunately, the posse found it. They got the boy and Willa, too. I need backup. Well, here we are. I was thinking of something with a little more firepower. Well, you want to let your pals lynch Paul Hick? You're going to be with us in the law. Onward, Christian soldier. Go ahead, kill me! Oh, what, ladies first? Yeah, but you ain't no lady. So first, the coot. Now, here's what happened. We caught you, you tried to escape. And all these people witnessed it. Hold it, John D. You're surrounded. Before you start shooting, boys, consider the situation back here. Now, Jimbo here can't shoot all of you no way. So he's decided to set his sight on just one of you. Who's the lucky man? anyone and this now will I is this how you treat your saintly canonized Lord God look you're gonna have to stop feeling sorry for yourself how do you think I feel I took her story public and you owe it to Willow we owe it to her, to win this thing. So she didn't die for nothing. Do you hear me? Hi. 
excuse me, ma'am. I'm... No. I'm... <clears throat> oh, boy. If you're going over there, no one's home. Oh, thanks, ma'am. Missed him by about 20 minutes. Ah. Friend of theirs? No, actually, I'm a friend of uh, Willa Harrell's. Ah. You know Willa? Lives over there? I bet. <laughs> well, man, Willa's dead. That young thing? Ma'am, do you have a minute? Where are you from? New York City. I was there once. 1943. There was this GI on me. I got a pot of coffee brewing inside. Thanks, ma'am. You know, Sheriff, first I thought you were another one of those redneck lawmen, but then some principles started to peep through, and I was really impressed. But if you think you're in control here, let me tell you something. The posse is running this town. I suppose you want me to throw everyone in jail. For starters, yeah. Damn it, Oliver, I don't have one shred of evidence that the posse killed Willie. In fact, J.D., the whole gang of them, every one of them, has an airtight alibi. Right, how very convenient. Willa got around. Somebody else might have been worried she'd talk too much. Yeah, including Sam Kimball's murderer. Keep talking. I talked to every living being in that trailer camp, including some who weren't quite living, trying to confirm Willa's story. And you got a lot of doors slammed in your face. Yeah, but I did find one New York Yankee fan, a lady. You know, the neighborhood spy. She just happened to be out emptying the garbage that night, and she saw Willa and some man. And that was the night Sam Kimball was killed. That was Paul. Now, you take it from there. some university lecturing myself at one time. Oh, we're at A&M. How'd you put it in the title of your article? The Canaanites, a communal success story. Yeah, well, 10 years later, I've got a different story. Oh, yeah, and the title? If you can't beat them, join them. The Canaanites and Agrabiz. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Provocative, but true. Look, you're a social scientist. The future's the giant corporate farm, Agrabiz, with the accent on the last syllable. The Canaanites are good farmers, but they can't compete with me. Yeah, well, the Canaanites have never been one for looking to the future. Yeah, but they want to protect their way of life, which means branching out. Land, however, is scarce and very expensive. Yeah, well, watch out, though. Cash has always been their strong suit. Compared to who? The Japanese, the Germans, the French, the Brits? They're buying up this country. But what's left to buy but Canaanite holdings? You offer them a premium price for the town commune, right? <laughs> you know, I'm impressed, Professor. You're a better researcher than I thought. That's right. And then I'd give him a break on a slightly smaller chunk of land about 100 miles from here that we can't turn a profit on. Right. Winners all around. That's right. I would prefer to ask Carl first, but tell me, what is your relationship with Rebecca Hecht? She was a student of mine at university about a decade ago. Mm. As you've already figured out, don't patronize me, Professor. Well, they don't tell me about this special student-teacher relationship. 
What was that little charade with me the other day? Look, Rebecca had her little stint out in the real world. She's back in the colony now. So why stir up any unnecessary suspicions? And she wanted it that way. And uh, I've been helping her on a computer program. Helping her? Is that all? She happens to be one of the best business women I know. Business? In my dictionary, that spells murder. Murder? Yeah. You've been reading too many detective novels, Professor. I made the Kennanites a very fair offer, and that's it. That's it? Huh? The Kimballs, Emma, Posse, all in a day's work, right? Huh? Well, it's a pretty expensive real estate deal. Now, come off it. What do you think I did? Killed some people for some land? Well, hey, that's a question for the grand jury, not for me. You know, you're not as smart as you look. I'd say our soiree has come to an end. You're right. It has. You said the guy was smart. He's in love with me, you know. I can do that to people. Really? Sounded to me like he'd love to see you in jail. I already am in jail. I'm a Kennanite and a woman. The world despises me and so does my father. To all the men, we're just cooks, baby machines. You've given me everything I ever dreamed of. People think Kennanite girls don't have dreams. We do. I remember the chills up my spine the first time I painted my toenails. <laughs> yeah, now that was very risky of you, wasn't it? And I immediately hid them under a heavy pair of socks. I'd do anything for you, Lee. For us. Look. If this deal goes through, I'm going to be getting a call from international headquarters. Paris. <gasps> Senior executive vice president. I want to go to Paris now. What? That'd be a hell of a thing for me to explain. Ah, oh, for God's sake, Rebecca, you heard your idol out there. He thinks we're knocking people off right and left out of greed. I told you he was smart. Look, cut the crap, all right? Because this type of stuff gives me the willies. I've done my bit, Lee. Now it's your turn. What evidence do they have except Gideon's theories, hmm? No Gideon, no theories. My God. You really did it, didn't you? I mean, you really did it. Don't look at me like that, Lily. <sighs> you like my hair like this? Your hair? Your damn hair? Hold me, Lee. Hold me, Lee. Protect me. I don't even have to be awake to know that you still got nothing on Drexel. And I certainly can't arrest her for dating a man from Agrilux. Though that ought to be grounds for something. Agrilux has been lusting after Kennanite land for a long time. And she knew that their main man has been lusting after her ever since college. So how do you get their land? You stir up the animosity toward their community and get them to abandon ship. She really knows the Kennanite history. And to assure results, she goes all the way. Murder. That tears me up. I saw myself in that girl. She was smart, ambitious, a little stifled. Lots of girls graduate from college without taking up murder. Yeah, but Rebecca is not lots of girls. She resented the fact that she was expected to fade into their woodwork. But she was a Canaanite. But that's precisely what made her snap. She was caught in this, this double bind. She wanted to be a full-fledged member of the Canaanite community. Not just a mop and a baby maker. 
But why Kimball? Well, she knew that Drexel had made Kimball an offer that same day. Yeah, but, but Kimball's death hurts Agrilux. The land goes into probate. That's the beauty part. It diverted suspicion away from the company and it concealed their true intent. I was right about Rebecca on one thing. She's very smart. Borrowing her brother's clothes for the night was easy. And then, with Will out of the picture, Paul has no alibi. Oliver, if your pretty little protege has a taste for killing, you better watch your back. Mr. Wilton's inside. His plane was early. Lee. Stan. Sit down. Our record is Simon Pure in this state. You've jeopardized that, Lee. What are you talking about? The girl, Lee. Oh, look, she needs help. I was too stupid to recognize that. But I'm telling you, the life they lead, it drove her crazy. It literally, it drove her crazy. I know it's not easy being out here in the boonies, Lee, but your taste in women leaves a little bit to be desired. You know what hurts? You know what really upset me is that I loved her. I tell you, you've never seen somebody so beautiful. A beautiful mess. That's what this is. The worst I've ever seen. It's a shame, Lee. Paris has been impressed with your work. Help us clear this one up and your career becomes a rocket ship. Impressed? They're, they're, they're really impressed? Oh, no one's made the numbers that you've scored here, Lee. You're king of these parts. That's why we expect you to handle this quickly and cleanly. A terrible wind came from the side of the desert. It shook the four corners of the house. And it fell upon thy children. And they're dead. I feel as Job when he first heard those words. How lucky are the dead. I don't think she has any idea what she's done. Then I'm an even bigger sinner than Job himself. What kind of father doesn't teach his daughter that murder is a sin? Helmut, listen to me. Haven't I listened to you enough? Don't harden your heart. Pray for her. I think she fears the loss of your love more than anything else. Even more than God. Yes. Not my type. Let's just do it and go. We are an Old Testament people living in a world that despises us for our piety. What makes us unique makes us dangerous, not to ourselves, only to those who try to subvert God's will, just as I am not dangerous to the righteous. didn't understand. But surely you. You know I'm merely God's instrument. Father, let us at least be honest with each other. Where would this community be without me? Forty acres and a mule. All these modern ideas. Mine, not thine. And vengeance. 
will be mine, saith the Lord. Thou shalt not kill. This is not murder. This is a war for our survival of our way of life. Was Joan of Arc a murderess? Like sheep, they lie in their grave. And death shall feed upon them. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. I have smote our enemies. And the Lord has made me his handmaiden so that I may be a humble and just leader. Tell the community, Father, tell them my stewardship is upon them. Back up. Sheriff, Gideon, you better get here right away. She's really gone south. We've got to take her now. I'll keep an eye on her. We are called to repentance, for the most magnificent dress cannot clothe a naked soul. The costliest jewels cannot adorn the spirit. Outward magnificence is like a piece of glass to the blue jay who keeps pecking at its glitter and turns away from the nourishing grain. Sin entices, for it promises to feed what it cannot satisfy. And the more we sin, the hungrier we become for grace. But everlasting life is given to all of those who deserve it. Stop playing game. Gideon. How do you do, pretty lady? A sweet greeting. It's not mine. It's a, a play. Shakespeare. 
I wish I could have taken a course from you. Well, I don't know a computer bit from a byte. But you know about life. We Kenanites only know about our life. We try to live out there. It's too confusing. Did Drexel confuse you, Rebecca? <laughs> I'm afraid I confused him. I used him. And Willa? She died for her sins. What about Paul? Paul got drunk and whored. He is a sinner. What did my father say, my virtuous papa? Oh, he'll grow out of it. And you were perfect. And I was ignored. But not by Drexel. And not by you. You knew I was special. I was destined for something. Sam Kimball. God's design is large, Gideon. It includes nations and kings. It's one drunken farmer. Agnolux would have dwarfed us, underpriced us in every market. Our survival is at stake. Our way of life. Savior of the Canaanites. Is that it? Profit from their greed. The most successful Canaanite community in our history. Created by the most successful woman in Canaanite history. The most successful Canaanite. Isn't this the moment that the mentor waits for? The time when the student proves that he... that she... surpasses even her teacher. Yes. This is the moment. She's out of the light. for the prayer service. We're gonna have to get up in the loft somewhere. Rebecca, there are two men out there with guns and Drexel sent them. He wouldn't do that. Listen to me, we've got to get up in the loft now.
wonder what it's like. Yeah, the same notion has been nagging me for 10 years now. What's mine is thine. Not a bad motto for life. Occasionally, just occasionally, I think, uh, why can't I be a better man? You know, live according to the good book. And then I look around me and I say, it's too hard. <laughs> No one can do it. But then you go there, you see that those people do it by the book every day. And I don't know, Talbot. There's an old Kennanite saying, you are fortunate to be living in the colony because there are always a hundred eyes watching you. A hundred, huh? <laughs> uh, you think Rebecca will ever stand trial? I don't see any court in this state judging her mentally competent to stand trial, no, sir. The perfect crime. Not from Lee Drexel's point of view. You heard what your masked man said. Well, it's incredible how talkative of a professional hit man can get when you offer to put the pressure on him. I wonder if Mr. Drexel is expecting us. Yeah, I wonder the same thing. I'm really delighted. Yeah, I'll be happy to be working. Listen, something important's come up. I'll get back in touch with you, all right? Something very important. Yes, indeed. Rebecca told us the whole story. We got you hit, man. I believe I'm entitled to an attorney. You're not only entitled to one, son. You're desperate for one. Graves right over there. Well, I'm sure Willa likes that. She was trying to talk me into staying. I wasn't hearing. I wanted my freedom. And now? I think I've seen enough of the world, Gideon. I told my father that I wanted to be baptized. The Bruderhof has voted to stay here, but we'll be branching out again. My father and I will join the new colony. Too many memories here. Jacob will be the leader, be closer to where Rebecca is. She'll need her family, people. <sighs> it's funny. I feel this incredible sense of relief. It's called freedom. I'm Ted Kopp. Later on Nightline, a hundred Chinese military leaders call on the army not to enter Beijing. Why is the People's Liberation Army so reluctant to confront the people? This is Charles Gibson. And John London. Tomorrow, the king of adventure, Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford joins us. Also, First Lady Barbara Bush, Joanna Kearns, and which popcorn rates best on Good Morning America? Hi, I'm Paul Page. It's the greatest spectacle in racing, the largest single-day sporting event in the world. It's the Indianapolis 500. Join us for live coverage Sunday on ABC Sports.